and our project is a comprehensive survey of the herpetological assemblage of Columbia County with a special focus on education and conservation. We're heavily inspired in this work by the similar work of Robert Storm in Benton County. Now, we decided to do this project because we are struck by the gaps in literature when it comes to distributional records in Columbia County. If you look at Nuspom et al, it's by far the most poorly documented region in terms of dot localities in all of Western Oregon. There's been very few museum records here. There's been very few surveys done here, either before or after Nuspom was published. And in general, it's hard to find any herpetological work that's been done here at all. Part of the reason for this is the fact that Columbia County is 93% under private ownership. A couple graphics I want to show you to elucidate that. Here you can see Columbia County is almost entirely forested, 88% forest land. Unfortunately, none of that is protected land. And in fact, it is owned almost entirely by private timber interests. You can see here some ONC lands in the south that have BLM in orange there. A little bit of state forest in the southwest here and a little bit of state and county owned forest in the center of the county but the entire rest of that forest land is owned by private timber interests it's logged on a 40-year cycle nowadays even faster than that in many cases uh, there are very limited stream barrier uh, stream buffers there's heavy application of herbicide most of the woody degree debris is burned off and so the habitat becomes quite degraded the combination of that degraded habitat and the access issues are in large part why few people have surveyed here. That being said, Columbia County is actually quite important biogeographically when it comes to Oregon. You can see we are at the easternmost extent of the coast range. We are at the northern boundary of the Willamette Valley. We form the southern border of the Columbia River, and we are just west of the western border of the Cascade Mountains. As a result of that, a lot of reptile and amphibian species reach their distributional limits in all four directions, either at or near Columbia County. So by studying Columbia County, we can come to determine exactly where those distributional limits actually are, as well as see how populations are faring at the edge of their distributions. There's also some stratification of habitat within Columbia County. If you see the coast range in our area can be broken into this volcanics region, which is a basalt base that comes down through the center diagonal of the county. And then on the east and west, we have what's called the Willamette Hills subregion, which is more of a sedimentary rock base, it tends to be lower in elevation, tends to have higher silt loads. And as we found from our studies, tends to support very different populations from the volcanics region. Get into methodology a little bit. We decided in order to comprehensively survey, we divide the county up into 100 sectors. We're doing five to 10 man hours of survey work in each one of those sectors, trying to split that survey work between the warmer seasons and the wetter seasons. Uh, our surveys are mostly visual surveys, including the examination of cover objects, both on land and in streams. We're also surveying breeding pools for amphibian egg masses, and we're doing night surveys, both on foot and in car. To supplement those original survey efforts, we're collecting all the data we can on previous uh, reptile and amphibian observations in the county. This includes museum records, which are few, past studies, which are also few, citizen science records in iNaturalist, and any contributions we can get from community members who have photographed reptiles and amphibians in the local area. At this point, I'd like to make a plea to the audience. Um, we're really looking for collaboration here. If you've ever done a survey or know of somebody who's done a survey in Columbia County, or if you would be interested in surveying in Columbia County, we'd be happy to have your help. Please contact us. Preliminary results to date, we found 23 species in our surveys. Three of these species were new species records for the county. Uh, we've also have two species which we have historic records for which have not yet been found during our surveys, the western toad and the western pond turtle. So we're doing some concentrated surveys this year to try and see if we can turn up either of those species. There's about half a dozen species whose presence is in question, possibly here. Uh, three of those we have word of mouth evidence for, but no direct records of them. So we're concentrating on those species as well. For the species we have found, we've noticed some of that internal stratification I talked about. Uh, three species, three reptile species, are limited to that Willamette Valley subregion in the southeast corner. Uh, four species are limited to 
a combination of the Willamette Hills subregion and the Willamette Valley, sorry, the Willapa Hills subregion and the Willamette Valley. And four species are exclusive to that volcanics region. We've also identified 10 localities that are especially rich in herpetological biodiversity, either having high biodiversity or unique biodiversity, and which we think could be conservation priorities. We're going to show you what a little bit of our data looks like. Uh, the Western long-toed salamander is one of our most surprising results. We found that they're basically entirely absent from that volcanics region in the center diagonal. Instead, they're limited to this Willapa Hills subregion in the uh, Columbia River Valley right here and in the Nehalem River Valley right here. The Northwestern salamander, on the other hand, is distributed across the entire county. There's a little bit paucity of records here in the southwest corner. We're not sure yet if that's a result of some of our surveys being non-ideal for the species when we were surveying in that region. And so we're doing a few more um, searches there this spring to try to pin down whether we can fill in those sectors or not. Western redback salamander has not had that problem. You can see they're pretty generally distributed across the entire county. Uh, the only places we have failed to record them are in a few river bottom plain sectors that basically are completely unforested. Columbia torrent salamander is one of those volcanics exclusive species I talked about coming right in along that um, central diagonal. We we're actually the first ones to officially record Columbia torrent salamanders in the county and are now we published that in 2019 and are now up to about two dozen records in the, or two dozen uh, localities in the county. We believe that Columbia torrent salamanders likely were more widely distributed in the county before. The current literature suggests that they prefer basalt-based streams but are not exclusive to it. And we've been able to find them in sedimentary rock streams in certain locations. We think that the heavy logging pressure, which increases that silt sediment load, as well as the water temperature of those streams has made it much more difficult for the torrent salamanders to maintain their populations in those Wallapa Hill subregions. Northern rubber boa is one of our classic Willamette Valley exclusive species, right here being restricted to the southwest corner of the county. However, it is pretty difficult to survey the species in forest habitats, and so we think it might be more widely distributed. Um, it's, again, difficult to do that except by getting uh, photographs from local community members. We expect to, at the very least, expand this range slightly to the north and fill in the gap right here. Uh, the Western Terrestrial Garter Snake is a species that had very few recent records in the Northern Willamette Valley. Um, our form is a little bit of an uh, integrade between the mountain subspecies and the wandering subspecies. It's known as the Willamette Valley morph. Um, it surprisingly has not been located in our surveys anywhere near any population centers or any paved roads. In fact, there are two museum localities near Klatskanai and near Scapoose that were fairly close to cities, we've been unable to find them in those locations and all of the places we've found them have been quite isolated. Uh, why the species tends to only be found far away from human habitat, unlike the other garter snakes in the region, is up for discussion. We want to now get into a little bit of this conservation emphasis that I told you about and how we're leveraging our study to increase local conservation efforts. The centerpiece of our work is the website wildcolumbia.org. On this website, we've been blogging about our project, explaining what the focus of the project is, uh, talking about some of our outings, and sharing with people how they can support local wildlife. Um, we've leveraged all that work we've done in all those survey hours to create the premier hiking guide for the region as well as a comprehensive wildlife guide both of which have attracted a lot of people to the website it's been fairly successful considering that our county only has a population of 50,000 in that we've been getting uh, about five to six thousand views a month even as a new website We're also working with a lot of local conservation groups, including the Friends of Liberty Hill, Friends of Dalton Lake, Friends of Columbia Botanical Gardens, Friends of Knob Hill, uh, the Oregon Native Turtle Working Group, and the various watershed councils that cover our region. We're doing a lot of student outreach. We did uh, some field events with local 4-H programs where we had them do some herping on their own and talked about the local uh, reptiles and amphibians and how they survive here and how they work into local ecosystems. 
Uh, we've done a couple of talks at local elementary schools. We've been incorporated into the curriculum of two high school science teachers. Unfortunately, the pandemic had a massive impact on these efforts. We did our first classroom presentation in a high school in March 2020. You know, little did we know that our second presentation would not come about till April 2022. So we basically had a two year gap where all of our school efforts were completely on hold. And unfortunately, there's no way to make up that lost time. So what can you do? An unexpected um, degree of attention has come to us via the media. There was a major article published in the local newspaper. We were interviewed on local radio. Uh, last second, we were given a booth at the county fair. And I mostly highlight those efforts to, just to say that they produce very little fruit. We actually had very little engagement come to us uh, via those newspaper articles, interviews, county fair work. Instead, unfortunately, our greatest engagement has come through community-based Facebook groups, which has gotten a lot of attention to the website, as well as a lot of people um, submitting records to us. I say unfortunately because I despise social media for a number of reasons, but honestly, that's where people are engaging and that's where the project has gotten by far the most attention. Uh, we also advertise on iNaturalist, speaking to um, people who are already taking iNaturalist records, citizen science records, uh, directly in the area or close to it and encouraging them to participate in the project as well. Uh, in terms of our remaining efforts, we are going to continue doing surveys through the end of 2022. We still have 21 sectors where we have not completed that five to 10 hours of survey work. We're also doing additional survey work in places where we expect to find new species, uh, focusing on clouded salamanders, western toads, western pond turtles, and a couple of remaining snake species. Uh, we're collaborating with the Oregon Native Turtle Working Group and Scappoose Bay Watershed Council to do a special project in terms of turtle surveys, where we're having volunteers survey uh, water bodies across the entire county. In fact, our volunteer training program for that starts next week. We're continuing to procure additional school events, and we're also continuing to blog on local nature and conservation issues. I want to thank you all for listening and again repeat that plea from earlier if you know anyone who has ever done any surveys even if it was only a single day's worth of survey work uh, in columbia county or who would be interested in doing a survey near columbia county in columbia county uh, please talk to them and please let us know we're happy to have all the collaboration we can thank you very very much and i hope you enjoy the rest of your talks